Good morning. Hi, it's Tammy. Um, welcome to Clear Morning uh, Yoga Practice. Let's just get started. Um, today I have two blankets. One is actually a sturdy beach towel for my props. And then one is um, one of these sort of blankets from Mexico. So it's, it's got some depth to it as well. So we may or may not need one or both of those. And then I'm using for a strap today to, to help uh, assist some uh, strengthening, lengthening postures. I have a, a men's tie. You could grab a towel from the kitchen, a dish towel. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of stretch in it. You want it to be taut. So something that's um, sturdy. And that's all we're gonna need today, I think. Um, of course, if you have regular um, bolsters, props, straps, those are useful as well, blocks. So take a moment to get those if you haven't already and meet me on your mat. And if you don't have a mat, um, I used to practice without a mat, um, just on my uh, carpet or even on a wood uh, surface. Um, yeah. We're not going to be doing any headstands or even shoulder stands today. So, and even if you are, um, have a blanket close by. We can, we can make it work. So most of you have probably met me before, but again, my name is Tammy and um, I'm here to uh, help move us through a practice or facilitate us moving through a practice that has uh, served me well in integrating unintegrated energies that lie in our bodies through um, our life's experiences. Both positive and uh, not so positive experiences can uh, land in our bodies unintegrated and leave us feeling uh, imbalanced, ungrounded. And uh, oftentimes if it's uh, an imbalance of the heart or uh, an experience where we've experienced uh, a great loss, it can leave us feeling um, um, heavy and uh, disoriented. So uh, moving these energies as they land in our bodies and get stuck um, in a way that allows them to pass on or integrate can then be uh, supportive energies. So there really are um, uh, ways through modalities through yoga practice that have served me well in um, my life's experiences, particularly um, in uh, integrating and processing grief and loss, but also in processing and uh, adapting to um, energies of happiness. Sometimes that can leave us uh, a little bit flighty and ungrounded. And so learning to come into balance in a way that supports us. So find your way onto your mat in a comfortable position, either seated or lying on your backs. And we'll just be here for a few moments so you don't have to use too many props or spend too much time, but allow yourself to be comfortable and then close your eyes. Take a nice, big, deep breath in through your nose. Pause for the moment in that fullness and then empty it out through your mouth, big sigh out. And really pull your belly button in towards your spine, hollowing your belly to really experience the empty of the breath. And do that again a few times, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And with each breath in, imagine or uh, practice this opportunity to receive or be present to the moment. And with each breath out, imagine that you're moving out what doesn't serve you, letting it go. And you don't have to identify them in a real 
depth uh, these energies, just, just the idea of receiving what supports you and pushing out or moving out, discarding what is not uh, supporting you. And imagine that you're feeling, filling up not just your diaphragm or your lungs or your torso, but that you're filling up your entire body, toes to head, and emptying head to toes or vice versa. So that like your body is this potential of energy that can expand and contract from toes to head and head to toes. Take three more rounds of breath like that. And in your last breath or after your last breath, don't let me rush you. Allow yourself to get 10% more relaxed or heavy or supported by the earth. Put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Let your breath return to its natural rhythm. And now make a commitment to the last or to the next um, 30 or 40 minutes, maybe an hour, <laughs> next 45 minutes, dedicate this to you, this time for you and to your practice. And if you um, feel the call to set a particular intention, do it now. And this can be served as a mantra when your mind starts to wander as we move through the practice. So let the intention, the sankofa, be simple. Like a one word that you'd like something to be integrated into your life or a statement. And then in the next few moments, make your way onto your mat into child's pose. Most of you know child's pose, but if you don't, I'll, I'll give an example of some of the postures. These are my little four-legged friends that are joining us today. This is Willow and this is Elsie. All right, so you're resting on your shins. Let your knees go out wide, big toes touch. Bring your hands forward and let your heart rest towards the floor. Forehead rest. Arms go soft. Let your, the weight of your arms rest heavy into the earth without pushing. So you're just relaxing into. Take, a, take three rounds of breath there. Maybe massage your forehead. And if your forehead doesn't meet the earth, this is a good place to um, grab one of those blankets. You can rest your forehead on the blanket. If that doesn't meet your needs, you can fold your blanket so it's taller. Yep. And a block works there too if you have a block, a pillow. So now you're going to start to allow your fingertips to reach a little bit further, but then you're going to pull your shoulders, the tops of your shoulders, away from your ears. So you're creating a little traction. At the same time, you're going to push your tailbone back towards your heels. So your arms become active. Now you're gonna walk your fingertips over to the right side of your mat or even off your mat, opening through the left side of your body. Big breaths here. Walk your hands back through center, pause for a round of breath, push your tailbone back, Lengthen your fingertips forward, plug your shoulders into their sockets and away from your ears. And then over to the other side. Fingertips walk over, forehead rests, if it, if it can, otherwise you just let your head dangle. And then push your sits bones back, open through the right side ribs, arms, back to center. Pause here again, big round of breath. 
Push it out. Come on to your hands and knees. Move your feet so that they extend behind your knees, right? So they're hips width distance apart and move through cow and cat. Inhale, cow belly drops towards the floor. Tailbone lifts, heart lifts. Exhale, cat. So you can keep in this linear motion for a few more rounds of breath. Or you can start to sort of circle snake and twist and move a little more organically. If you feel your feet coming off the ground, just push the tops of your feet down. This alleviates any pressure on your knees and then push your knuckles down. The knuckles um, where your fingers meet your palm, push those down and spread your fingers. This alleviates any stress on the wrist. And if you're making sort of circular motions with your hips, go in both directions. So if you're leading to the left, then start to lead to the right and vice versa. Let your head drop. It's kind of loosening up. The elbows can bend. Get really kind of jiggy with it. And then come to a still place. Hollow your belly so that your back becomes flat. And press the back of your head towards the ceiling. This is a nice, sturdy, table-like position. And now tuck your toes. Let your tailbone lean towards the sky, downward facing down. And as your knuckles continue to press down, your fingers spread even wider. And you're going to bend one knee and then the other lengthening through the heels up to the glutes. Your fingertips are, or your fingers and your palms are pressing down, lengthening from fingertips up to the tailbone. Then come to a still place and pause, downward facing dog. Nod your head, yes. Dangle it, no. Nod it, yes. Yes, yes, I am worthy and I am deserving of this practice. Walk your feet to your hands. Feet are about hips width distance apart for ragdoll. I like to bend my knees a lot here, especially if this is the first movement I've done all day. Um, so much so that my ribs rest to my thighs. So I get this nice little compression into my low back. So knees are bent a lot, head gets heavy. And then I'll start to lengthen here again through the heels, up through the backs of the knees, lifting the tailbone a little bit more for a deeper fold. But you could stay right here, dangling. Now on your next inhale, you're gonna um, take your hands to your shins or your knees and lift to a half lift, flat back. On the exhale, bow forward. Let's do that again. Half lift, forward fold. All the way up to standing or extended mountain, reach to, keep, or to your fingertips tucked, and then pull it into your heart. So this, do that again. Arms to, at the sides and then we reach up. Receiving or grabbing onto what's possible in the universe or what the spirit has for us and pulling it into our essence, into our center, into our heart space. Do that again. Open, palms open wide, fingers spread. Receive the gifts of integration. Bring it in. Okay, one more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bow all the way forward. Flat back, half lift, long spine, forward fold. Extended mountain, inhale, reach and lift, lengthen, bring it into heart. Here we go, one more time, reach, bow forward, breath goes out, half lift, inhale, and bow. 
Extended mountain. Just warming up, hands to heart center. This time we're gonna reach up, lift with our heart, swan dive down the exhale, forward fold. Half lift. With your left foot setting back, plant your fingertips. Crescent lunge. Crescent lunge. And let's lower the knee to a low lunge. And we'll play with it here. Bring your hands to your knee. So you want to squeeze your inner thighs together to level your hips. So right hip presses back, left hip lunges forward just a little. Yeah. We'll pause here for a moment. Bring your arms up and hands to heart center. Now lift that back knee. Crescent lunge. Breathe. Long, slow breaths. All right, now plant your hands, framing the front leg. Step back, downward facing dog. Both feet meet at the back of the mat. Hips lift high, come up onto your toes. On the exhale, press your heels. Back and down. Do that again. Inhale up onto the toes. Exhale, heels press back down. And then you'll come down to child's pose. Inhale, camel or half camel. So we're going to press into our shins and lift up. It's like mountain on our knees. And then we'll reach back in, tailbone presses back, belly gets firm, child's pose. Downward facing dog. Feet come to hands, flat back half lift, forward fold. Extended mountain, rise and reach and breathe. Bring it to heart center. Inhale, reach, dive with your heart leading, forward fold. Flat back, half lift, plant your hands. Oh, right foot goes back, or opposing foot goes back this time, low lunge. So just go right into low lunge, knee rest. You can keep your back toes tucked or untuck them. You can stay here with your hand, framing the front foot, or come back to that squaring of the hips. Charging, so really pressing your left foot down, your front foot down, doing some charge, and then pressing your back shin down. Bring your hands up into heart center, pause. Now's the time if you want to, full crescent lunge or lifting that back knee. Keep your inner thighs squeezed together so you maintain integrity in this posture. Hands come back down to the mat, downward facing dog. Press into your hands, lift your hips. Child's pose. Camel. And you can uh, make this more of a back bend by uh, interlacing your hands behind your back and lifting your heart. Keep your hips over your knees. So the tendency is to sort of fall back or sway too far forward. So keep them right. Maybe open through the throat or a little assist. Child's pose, firm belly. Downward facing dog. Look to your hands, bring your feet to your hands. Half lift, forward fold. Mountain pose. I'm just gonna guide you through this next one. It's the same thing, we'll just do it again. Bow forward, 
Half lift. Low lunge. Low lunge or crescent. Come right to it. Downward facing dog. Child's pose. Camel, shins pressed down, upper body lifts. Make it your own, however you like. Child's pose. Downward facing dog. Big breath in, open mouth. Empty out. Step or hop to the top of your mat, feet to hands. Flat back, breathe in. Forward fold. Mountain pose, breathe in, lift your arms and reach. Hands come to heart on the exhale. Arms reach up, heart help leads as you dive forward fold. Breathe it all out. Inhale to a half lift, flat back. Plant your hands, opposing footsteps back now for lunge on the second side. Take a few breaths here to make it your own. So start with low lunge if you did on the other side or not, whatever feels right to this side. Eventually coming into that crescent, which looks something like this. Stay high on your toes with your heel really lifted in that back foot. Downward dog. Child's pose. Camel. Shins press down as you lift up. Make it your own. Take a few breaths here. Child's pose. Stay here in child's pose for a few moments. And then you'll come to tabletop, flat back. Kind of what we did in the beginning here. I want you to extend your left arm forward, your right leg back. Big breath in, reach your fingertips, press your heel. On the exhale, elbow comes to knee. A little rounding through the upper back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, do this six more times. Inhale, lengthen, and then the exhale. Don't rush it. See if you can extend the length of your breath, the depth of your breath. Probably two more. There we go. Back to tabletop, round of cow pack, level out. Equalize the weight of both hands the weight bearing on both shins and knees. Come to a flat back, long spine, all this integrity and switch sides. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen, feel it, elbow to knee. So wait for it, wait for the knee for that next breath. Don't rush it, be with it, be with it, be with the Unintegrated energies, acknowledge them and then send them on their way, receiving and acknowledging the positive energies. Two or three more times, wherever you're at, this is your practice. And then you'll come back to tabletop for a round of cow cat. Don't let me rush you. We'll meet in tabletop. Pausing. Downward facing dog, big breath in, big empty out. I want you to set your left knee down. I'm mirroring you, so it'll be my right knee. Extend your um, opposing foot back and reach for a um, modified high, half, high plank. 
Clank, 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 clank. And here we're gonna take a little tuck. So we're gonna round and reach and look. Round. So looking for stability here. Stabilizing. Press and flex. So press your heel back and your toes towards your nose. Round. Reach and lengthen. Charge the kneecap towards your hip. Round, reach and lengthen. Last time. Back to tabletop, round of cow cat. Flat back. And now you take this to the other side. So first come into downward facing bow. Opposite knee comes down. Opposite leg lifts and lengthens. Belly gets firm. And notice if you take your gaze up to your left thumb to your raised thumb, that you get a little bit more stability, even though you want to, like the natural thing is to want to look down. See if you can work on looking up towards the furthest extension. So in this instance, it would be your thumb that's raised to the sky. All right, now big breath in, stabilize here, and practice that bringing the arm through, Squeeze through the belly. Notice this rotation is a little bit of a twist. Keep it going. I'm gonna mirror you one more time so you know. But you're on your second side and you're just bringing it in. Firm, bringing it out. Tendency is to hold our breath here, but be sure that you're extending, breathing in, pushing, squeezing it out. Couple more times. And then you'll meet back in child's pose. There we go. On your next inhale, downward facing dog. Stay for the exhale. Meet at the top of the mat. Bring your big toes out to um, about hips with distance apart. Take your first two fingers, your peace fingers, wrap them around your big toes, half lift flat back here. Knees can still be soft or lengthened. Forward fold. You stay right here. I'm gonna turn just so that you can see me. Okay. Now you're gonna release your fingers from your big toes. And you're gonna walk your feet, heel toe them out a little bit wider. And you're gonna come into wide-legged squats. So drop your tailbone down. I like to use my elbows against my knees because the tendency for me with my tight hips is to lean or fall forward. So I use my elbows as a support and assist so that I can get that tailbone to drop just a little more. Stay planted in the four corners of your feet. So your big toe mound, your baby toe, the base of your baby toe, and both sides of your heels. This will help anchor you. You can close your eyes here. Five more breaths. Stay. So come back to your intention, your sankofa. Choose your breath, choose your breath. When things get, get difficult off the mat, choose your breath. Sometimes I um, forget and when I forget, I regret. Oh my gosh, breath, breath can help me uh, sometimes before I, Use my words in a way that aren't as kind as I want them to be. Every time I choose my breath, I'm never sorry. Okay, Hand, forward fold, wide legged forward fold. So you're gonna heel toe your uh, feet out even a little bit wider and let the head drop. Maybe you rest your forearms, maybe you rest your head to the floor. 
maybe you stay in a sort of half lift flat back. Here's lots of options. The weight of your um, the weight on your feet is going to be to the outer edge of your foot, the ninth set. Still pressing all four corners of your feet down. And now come to, if you're not there, come to a half lift flat back here with your legs wide. We're going to go into that uh, skandasana is what it's called. So you're going to, uh, on your right foot, the ball of the foot twists. Set your heel down so your foot is pointing out. Maybe you're on your left foot. That's okay. We're going to do both sides. You're going to bend into that knee and lift the toes of the opposite foot. So maybe you stay here with hands at heart. <laughs> I look like cousin it. There we go. Hands at heart. Maybe you do a bind or a full bind, wrapping all the way around. It's a challenge for me this morning, so I'm going to stay here. Two more breaths. And then you'll just simply come back to center, neutralize your feet. So feet, outer edge of the feet are uh, parallel to the outer edges of your mat, or top and bottom, and then forward fold here. Half lift. Same thing, other side. Point your toes out so that they're, your heels in line with your knees. There you go. Deep into the hip. Deep into the breath. When life gets sticky, when life gets messy, take a moment to breathe. It's not necessarily gonna change anything, but it'll help change your perception and keep you grounded. Okay, back to that wide-legged forward fold. One more time. Half lift, heel toe, your feet together, or hips with distance, flat back, forward fold. You're gonna, um, uh, Padagustasana, so our Padagustasana. Plant your hands so that the backs of the hands are on the ground and the palms of the hands are making contact with your feet. Gorilla pose. Again, here you can bend your knees a lot or lengthen them so that your thighs come away from your belly. Release your hands. Bring your big toes to touch. Flat back half lift. Forward fold, extended mountain, stand tall. Um, from here, you're gonna take tree pose. So you can't see my upper body. I apologize for my lack of uh, film expertise, but um, bring your hands to heart center and start with just a little kickstand. So pull all the weight into your left foot, left leg, and bring your right foot at a kickstand, resting at your shin, or bring it all the way to your inner thigh. This way you're charging your thigh against the bottom of your foot and your foot is pressing into your thigh. So coming into center. Honoring balance. If you fall out, just come back. Two more breaths. Here we go, bring both feet back to the mat. Pause for a moment, big breath in, reach. Bring your hands into heart center, take it to the other side, pull all your weight and build it. You don't have to come into it, fullest expression right at that moment. We'll have several breaths here. Maybe one side needs a different location for that foot to land. Honoring each side, meeting our body where it's at, 
and then deciding where we can take it. And then be there, be there with it. Acknowledge, acknowledge this is where I'm at today. This is where I am today. One or two more breaths, right where you are. And then bring your foot down, meet the other. Hands at the side, close your eyes. Left hand at heart, right hand at belly, cough. Come back to the top of your mat. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Flat back, half lift. High plank, step back for a plank pose here. So modified plank would be dropping to your knees in this modified leg push-up position, otherwise high plank position. And then you're gonna lower down all the way to your belly. Like the chaturanga. And here you'll take a um, salabhasana, locust pose. So bring your fingertips underneath your armpits or at your ribs, upper ribs. Yep. And they're just going to rest here. Squeeze your elbows up and back. Now you can press the tops of your feet down and lift your heart, or you can lift your legs as well. A little back bend. And then lower down, bring your hands to stack in front of you as a pillow for your forehead. Bend your knees, drop your shins side to side. Do that again, Salabhasana, Locust Pose. Three more breaths. Hands come to have a pillow for your forehead and bend your knee. Let your shins drop side to side. And slip back into child's pose. And notice where your blankets are. So here you're gonna grab your blankets, lift up from child's pose just a little. I'm gonna take both my blankets. Make sure they're folded fairly, uh, nicely stacked, not a bunch of lumps in them. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, come over it like like tabletop. And I want like the above your knees to land right on the edge of the stack of the blankets. And then you're gonna lower your belly down. And, and so it's like locust, but we're just gonna come down to a to um either arms out to the side and forehead rests. So I went, what I want you to feel here, so you might have to scoot your torso around a little bit, is that you're, there's room here for your, uh, your breastbone that your breast can just rest. Your forehead sort of reaches forward and there's sort of this sensation of an opening in that low back. And then let your breath be really heavy here so that the compression of your belly against the blankets will give that splaying or that length sensation even more. And then the arms can be wherever it feels comfortable. For some of us, it's going to be like in locust resting. Locust. That's a good name for this pose, resting locust. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to press back up into, um, you could just press back into child's pose if you like, and you could use the blankets to slide under for a supported child's pose.
or you can push the blankets over to the side. Two more breaths in child's pose. And then you'll simply come up to seated. So take those breaths. Don't let me rush you. Once you come up to seated, you can use the blanket if you'd like, one in blanket, and just sit on the edge. If that feels good to you. If not, um, you can do without the blanket. Some of us um, like that little lift for our low back, so it helps shoot our um, lift our bellies forward. We're gonna come into butterfly, seated butterfly. So the soles of your feet come together, your knees come out wide. If this is way too intense, you can take your strap or your makeshift strap, your tie, you can wrap it around your um, the tops of your feet and lengthen out and then soften forward. If you don't have a strap and this is still really intense, keep lengthening your feet forward. That'll take the intensity out. Um, for some of us, we like it. I like the intensity because it's an area where um, of work for me to release. I have a lot of uh, stale energy in my hips. And then you'll lead with your heart, maybe using your uh, forearms as a little leverage to assist the knees out wider, but not forcing. We're not forcing, we're leading with our heart. And then you can let your chin drop. Keep, refrain from the urge to let your shoulders shrug. So you're gonna keep a broadening through the collarbones. But your chin can drop towards your heart. And then you're gonna inhale back up. Leave one foot in, extend one leg out and tuck that bent knee foot in towards the inner thigh. So this might be it for most, some of us, many of us. I want you to do a little rotation of the heart so it lines up with your knee. And then I want your toes to lengthen towards the sky or the ceiling. Lots of times we fall forward or we fall inwards. Just keep that nice uh, alignment there. Okay, and slight bend in the knee is totally fine. Don't hyperextend. This is a great place for the um, strap or the tie. Place it around the ball of your foot and then give it, you can have both hands. I like to wrap my hands around or wrap the tie in a loop around. And then here, this is where we're gonna link. Now notice that that extent, that bent knee may, might wanna lift up. Just ask it to press down and then you know that's where you're at your edge. When it starts to want to waver or your sits bones, are wanting to, uh, one wants to take the load over the other. That might be your edge. That might be where you're at today. Or you might have the, uh, the space today to fold all the way forward. Notice where you're holding and send the breath there. Now, if the strap doesn't work, you can totally just rest your hands to the floor. And now we're gonna come up just halfway, just halfway to unhinge. Take your um, hand and place it inside your shin <laughs> and lift up. So it's this expansion up, maybe a bind. And then all the way up, back to butterfly. Lead with the heart, fold forward, not pulling the tendency. I just tried to do that. I want, I always want to force things. Noticing where I'm trying to force. It feels somewhat like trying to jam a round peg in a square hole. Just doesn't work. Well, unless the square is really big, right? or unless the hole's really big. <laughs> it's funny how I hear myself. Okay, come on up. We'll just simply switch sides and make it real simple. 
Keep it real simple. Set it up though, take the time to rotate. Just that small little rotation really changes the integrity of the shape. And maybe you just pause here for a moment, feeling into it. So I'm feeling my opposing sit bone wanting to lift off. So I'm gonna pause here for a moment just so that I can anchor both sit bones before I ask for anything more. And I'll meet each sticky spot with breath, soothing it, acknowledging it with the inhale, soothing it with the exhale. This practice with meeting sticky situations, challenging positions, difficult situations, or even things that we don't know, but unintegrated feelings, meeting them with breath acknowledges that there's something going on and then exhaling it out. This means that you're letting go as much as you can. We don't always have to identify the exact nature or source of um, these unintegrated energies. Stay here for three more rounds of breath. And then release the, the bind or the strap. Come, oh, yep, come up halfway. Arm reaches inside and lifts. Open it up. Maybe take a bind here. And then all the way. All right, now you'll come on back to, come on to your backs. Let's see how much time we have. Okay, okay, so roll down. Actually, yes, move it around and come on to your back. Take bridge pose. So bring both feet flat to the floor, close, heels close to your glutes. I want you to um, try this this time, make robot-like arms so that you have some leverage here with the upper arm bones pressing down, particularly there just above the elbow. And then you'll push and lift your hips. Breathe here for three rounds of breath. On this last breath, if you haven't already, breathe in through your nose. Pause, and then the exhale is going to go out your nose as well. And then lower down one vertebra at a time. Release your hands to the floor. Bend your knees. Rock your hips side to side. Another bridge pose. Do this again with your... Um, robot arms, inhale up. Try some of that ujjayi breath in through your nose, out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your nose. One more time. In, lift your hips higher. Use the exhale to lower down. Almost like a balloon deflating. All right, massage that low back into the floor. Knees maybe go side to side. Okay, here's another opportunity for those blankets, either one or two for waterfall. Viparita Parani. So you're going to lift into a slight bridge, slide the blankets underneath your hips, and set the blankets so that they're right at the edge or the top of your the high, the low, low part of your low back and the top of your tailbone. So here your hips are just gonna lift nice and easy. There's no effort. I'm not ex engaging a lot of muscle, nor am I toning my belly much. This is a restorative shape. It's a waterfall, deeper to broaden. And even like if your feet hold any kind of tension or anything like that, um, you can rotate your ankles, wiggle your toes, 
and then drop into some stillness here. So the backs of your shoulder blades are weighing heavy into the earth, creating some openings through the collarbones. I like to rest the backs of my hands so that there's an external rotation in my arms. My hands are weighing um, nice and relaxed so that my fingertips are curled. I'm gonna take a big swallow and soften my jaw. Soften my tongue away from the roof of my mouth. Do that with yours. One foot at a time, bring your feet back down. Another bridge pose, big breath in, push your upper arm bones down, lift your hips, slide the blankets out. On your exhale, lower down, butterfly pose. Suktabada, we call you butterfly, Suktabada Kanasana. You can let this be your final resting pose, or if you have any other poses or shapes that you need, feel the need or call to come into, please do so. Come into a shape that allows you to fully drop in. And if you notice your mind starting to wander, like, oh, it's almost over, what am I gonna do next, please? Don't let that be a permission to do so. Tone back into your breath and allow, allow that to be your anchor to stay here. I'm gonna read this, share this reading with you today. It's called Inside Gravity. Inside gravity, the same things happen, just slower. When a plate breaks, we call it an accident. When a heart breaks, we call it sad. If it's ours, we say tragic. When a dream breaks, we sometimes call it unfair. Yet ants drop dirt and damage more and, and manage more. And birds drop food and peck again. But as humans, when we drop what we need, philosophies and complaints ab abound. It's not that we moan, but that we stop, that we stop living to hear ourselves moan. Still stars collide and histories begin. In our world, something is always letting go and something is always hitting the earth. Often that which we let go survives by releasing but not holding on until what needs to go is ripped from it. Often that which is hit survives by staying soft, by allowing what hits it to temporarily shape it the way stones shape mud. As humans, we take turns letting go and being hit. Love softens this process and peace slows it down until in moments, that are blessed, we seem to play catch with what we need. As you inhale, bring to mind what is currently hitting you and how you might soften to lessen its impact. As you exhale, bring to mind what is currently needing to move away from you and how you might open yourself to more easily release it, to more easily release it.
Take a deep breath in. And an open mouth exhale. Two more times, breathing in big and full. Emptying out big and full. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and maybe rock your head or face side to side. Reach your arms up overhead, stretch your toes forward. Big stretch, maybe even take a moment here. You're still on your back for a little banana-like shape. So just arcing, rocking your heels over to one side, maybe even crossing your legs and then walking your arms and shoulders over to another side, a little banana arch or a reclined crescent moon. And then over to the other side. Oh, that feels good. Yep. And then back to center. Hug your knees into your chest. Squeeze, push your low back down. Maybe a happy baby here. Oh, that, that is, that's nice too, yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna take a little twist before we come up to seated. Drop your knees to one side. Let your shoulders stay anchored, both of them. Take your gaze in the opposite direction of your knee. Come back to center, hug in. Drop to the other side. Gaze drops in the opposite direction of your knees. Hug in at center. Roll up to seated. Plant both sits bones. Close your eyes. Hands come to heart center. May you find peace in your mind, kindness in your words, especially those words that we tell ourselves, and softness and love and openness in your heart. Health in our bodies. It has been a divine pleasure to share this practice with you this morning. Namaste. Be kind to yourself, be gentle to yourself. It is a process, it is a practice. Take care everybody. See you soon.